Hi everyone, hope you've all been enjoying the lovely sunshine we've been having this week. It's the time of the week again to share a special story together. Now I've picked something a little bit different this week and it is called Dread Cat and it's written by Michael Rosen. Now as you can see, it's a little bit longer than the ones we've been reading so far so we might have to read this one in a few parts but we'll see how we go. First of all, I thought I'd read you a bit of the information on the back. It says, let the game of cat and mouse begin. All the mice scarper, skedaddle and scoot back to their hidey holes when dread cat's about. But now he's promised to turn over a new leaf. Instead of chasing mice, he will feed them tasty bits of cheese. Can the mice trust a word, dread cat says? Is the war between cat and mouse really over? Now, what do you think? Would you trust dread cat? Not sure I would, but let's find out what happens in this story. Now, chapter one is called The Dreaded Dread Cat. Once there was a very fierce cat. Not just fierce. Well, fierce, totally fierce, terrifyingly fierce, stupendously fierce, stinkingly fierce. Everyone was afraid of this cat. Its name was Dread, Dread Cat. Everyone dreaded Dread Cat. In fact, everyone dreaded Dread Cat so, 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 so much that all Dread Cat needed to do was turn up and everyone fled. Whoosh! Everyone scarpered, everyone skedaddled, and everyone scooted. So Dread Cat wasn't too good at the mouse catching business. And remember, it's the business of cats like Dread Cat to catch mice. It's their job. And the truth is, Dread Cat wasn't doing his job. Bad news, huh? Chapter 2. Eek, eek, eek. So Dread Cat had a plan. And Dread Cat told his plan to anyone near or far who could hear his plan. Listen to how it goes. I am giving up chasing mice, Dread Cat said in a very loud voice. I will never try to catch or kill another mouse. Heaven forbid the war is over. The war between cat and mouse is over at last. Yes, I said over. Over a diddly over. And I shall prove it. Then Dread Cat said, I invite all of you, all the mice in this house, to come out every night and walk in a long line past me. I will have a piece of cheese ready for you. And when I say you, I mean each and every single one of you. You mice will see how much I keep my word. Oh yes, I will not touch a hair on your head. Not a single mouse, not a single head, not a single hair. How about that? While Dread Cat spoke, the mice were hiding in their hidey holes, hunkering down in their tiny homes, cowering under floorboards as they listened. Could they believe him? Should they believe him? What do you think? Had Dread Cat really, really, really ended the war between cat and mouse? Was that possible? The mice talked and whispered among themselves. Psst, eek, eek, psst, eek, they said. Not many people know mouse language, but believe me, this was all about whether they should trust Dread Cat. In the end, the mice agreed. They would give it a try and come out for the cheese that Dread Cat put out for them. When you are a mouse, you don't miss the chance of some cheese when someone offers it to you, even if it is Dread Cat doing the offering. Chapter 3. Quick as a flash. That night, Dread Cat sat back with his back to the fire and sorted out a bit of cheese for every mouse in the house. He laid the bits of cheese all out, sat behind them and waited, waited for the mice. One by one, the mice came out from their hidey holes and tiny homes. They crept out towards the bits of cheese, grabbed a bit and whooshed back home. And all the while Dread Cat smiled and purred at each one of them. In reply, each mouse said, Thank you, sir, or thank you, Dread Cat. The war between cat and mouse was over. It was the end of the war. It was peace in our time. One by one, the mice came out, took a piece of cheese and whoosh, off they went home. On they went until the 30th mouse had taken a bit. And then on they went until the 40th mouse had taken a bit. And then till the 94th mouse had taken a bit. And then, but then, but then, the 50th mouse, the very last mouse, the mouse on the end of the line walked past Dreadcat. 
Dreadcat's right paw shot out, and as quick as you like, quick as a flash, Dreadcat grabbed that fiftieth mouse and held it tight. Did any mouse see that? No, not at all. All the mouse mice were gone. Even the forty-ninth mouse had slipped down the hole in the wall. The fiftieth mouse was on its own. Dreadcat didn't waste any time. <gasps> Gulp. In went the 50th mouse into Dreadcat's mouth. Down went the 50th mouse into Dreadcat's belly. Gone. Just like that. Chapter 4. Over a diddly over. The next night Dreadcat spoke again. Tonight, my friends, it shall be the same. The cheese bits will be ready and waiting for you. You will see that I am as good as my word. I have changed my ways. I do not chase mice. The war between the cat and mouse is over. Over a diddly over. So that night, one by one, out came 49 mice in single file out of their hidey holes, out of their tiny homes. They filed past Dreadcat, took their bit of cheese and said, Thank you, sir, and thank you, Dreadcat, and then headed off home. Then, just like the night before, just as the 49th mouse walked past, Dreadcat grabbed the 49th mouse off the end of the line and held it tight. Did any mouse see that? No, not at all. All the mice were gone. Even the 48th, 48th mouse had slipped back down the hidey hole in the wall. The 49th mouse was on its own. Dreadcat didn't waste any time. <gasps> Gulp! It went in went the 49th mouse into Dreadcat's mouth. Down went the 49th mouse into Dreadcat's belly. Gone just like that. We've got to chapter five, not so sure. And I think we'll leave it there and save the rest of the story for next week. Maybe before next week, you could have a think about what the mice could do or how the mice might find out Dreadcat's evil plan. Okay, have a lovely, lovely week. And I still miss you all lots and hope to see you all very, very soon. Bye.